Okay then, so in this series of, of small videos, let's take everything that we have learned so far and put something together which is a little bit more of a practical example of using something like Flutterflow, which is my front end tool of choice, with BuildShip to try to do something a little bit more valuable in a workflow. So what I've got on screen at the moment is a very, very simple Flutterflow application that's just got a couple of fields on there. It's the typical form that you might have on a website or on a mobile app that you're asking a user to kind of fill in and send some details. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to provide the ability to kind of key all the details in here, submit the form, a build chip workflow will be invoked, we'll get hold of that data through the workflow, through the trigger itself, and then we're going to pass that through to a series of nodes in order to then send the email to my email address. So it's a really, really simple example, but of course in this particular course we're building up to more complex examples with inside BuildChip itself. So let's now move over to BuildChip and let's get the workflow set up to support this particular application. Then we'll come back here, we'll quickly integrate it, and then we'll give it a test. Okay, so we're back in BuildChip. Let's move up here to the plus. Let's create a brand new workflow. I'm just gonna call this form to email like that, hit create. Now, what I'm gonna do is add the trigger in. Now, this is gonna be a rest trigger, just as we did before, because of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up this as a post request and pass a body into this. It's gonna contain the values from our Flutterflow application. So on the path, let's just call this form to email like that. And let's move to three dots at the top there, edit. Let's go to the body because we're gonna pass these and let's pick the plus. Let's give our first one a name here. So it's gonna be name like that. And that's gonna be a string. Hit the plus again. Now this one, let's just select that there. This one is gonna be um, email like that. Just type in email there and then hit plus again. Just check that there. And then this is gonna be just message. So we're gonna give our users the ability to key a message in. Now these are all gonna be strings, so really straightforward. And we can then just hit the save. So that's now all nicely set up for us. Now the next part that we're gonna do is something slightly different to what we did before. We're gonna kind of again use a pre-built node, but this is gonna be more of an integration type node because we're now gonna integrate this particular workflow with a third party service. So hit the plus here. Now, if you would like to follow along, there is some additional steps that's gonna be needed with inside the provider that I'm going to be using here now. So a provider that offers a free service, but if you would like to use their service, there is some restrictions on their side where you can use their service for free, but you're gonna to need to do some kind of setup on the domain in order for the emails to arrive in your inbox. Now that's gonna be some DNS entries that you're gonna to need to add. Now I can do a little separate side of video just to talk you through some of the settings that you need to put in place in order for this to work. But if you're just following along, just to kind of get an idea of kind of how build chip kind of works, then please do continue watching um, and we'll just go through the steps necessary um, in order to get this up and running and I'll kind of demonstrate that on screen. So let's move down here. Let's go with these options here for integrations. Now these are all of the third party uh, sort of uh, providers that BuildChip is currently integrating with. Now of course it depends when you're actually watching this. Is there could be a lot more than this and a lot more examples. But I'm going to move down to this a provider here called Resend because the great thing about Resend is that they've got this lovely uh, service where I can just uh, now send sort of data uh, sort of like a, a request into Resend and uh, just pass some value values in on a pre-built node and of course then I'll get that email then uh, arrive in the inbox. So just choose the resend, uh, sorry the send emails there. So here it is, you can see here now the node is now landed with inside of my workflow, it's already hooked up for me and this is where I can now start configuring these particular sections. So let's now talk a little bit about the API key, I'll show you in resend where I'm getting that from because of course in order to integrate with this provider I need to kind of have access to their platform and that is done by use of an API key. Let's quickly pop over to reset and I'll show you where I set that up. So in the No Code Academy, I'll have a video which will talk you through the setup of using Resend. You can use it for yourself as well. And I'll show you the steps that I under uh, I undertook to kind of get all of this set up. But just for the purpose of this particular integration, let's talk a little bit about the API key. So I'm on the Resend dashboard. I've got my account. I'm signed in. If I move over to the API keys here, what I've done is I've created a dedicated API key here for BuildShip. Now this is going to be unique, this particular API key. And what I expect you to kind of do in your 
your own kind of setup is just kind of got to create API key keys, some details in, call it build chip, call it whatever you like. Uh, the permission, just keep it down to sending access because really that's all this is doing is just sending kind of emails here. Um, don't worry too much about this, but of course you can set different kind of domain names up, but um, just hit add and that will create you a brand new API key. Uh, it's kind of like just up behind the scenes here, give you an opportunity to copy it to the clipboard and then we can move back over to build chip and I'll show you a specific location where you can then now set up these API keys in a more of a secure location within build chip and then you can reference them with inside the workflows themselves. So let's move back over to build chip now and just assume that you've got that copy to the clipboard. Okay, so then back in build chip, let's move over to the little cog here. Let's go to this particular area called secret keys. Now this will allow me to kind of associate a key that I can use. I can use more than one, by the way, with inside a particular project. You can have many, many different keys, but I'm just gonna create one here for resend. So just hit add a secret key here, and I'm just gonna type in resend like that. And I'm just gonna paste in now my API key there like that and hit the save. Now that's just gonna be nice, safely stored behind the scenes. And of course, I can't really do nothing with this key now. I can delete it, of course, I can edit, but I can't get to kind of the value here. So um, once you've kind of, you, you've kind of captured it and it's saved in here, you can't actually see it again here. You'd have to kind of delete it and, and re-put it back in, but then it should all be safety first, of course. So now that key is all set up, I can now reference that key within inside of my actual workflow. So I'll go back to form to email. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is go to this specific node here hit the edit and of course I've got this drop down option called secrets and this is where it is and you can see here I've got the recent of course I've got many different keys here they're going to all going to be listed and of course if I wanted to I could also add the secret here directly but I wanted to show you it via the cog because I kind of reference at the beginning of this particular course kind of what some of these settings do so at least hopefully the two will marry out but of course there's a little time saver shortcut there you can hit that so just hit resend and this will kind of be kind of technically a variable underneath the covers so there it is it's all been associated so that's my first field that's currently selected Okay, next, you can see the fields that are kind of mandatory to us, by the way, because we kind of got the, the yellow here, which is pretty good. If you go back to the node anatomy uh, video that I did, it talks a little bit about kind of the integrals behind the scenes, where you're kind of seeing that represented within inside the workflow as well. So we know these are mandatory fields because they got that color. So we need to work on the from now. So kind of where is this email coming from? Well, I just need to hit the little pen here. Now I've got a specific email address that I use for my more automation activities and stuff like that so again it's an unmonitored email address but this is kind of where it's coming from so I'm just gonna keep that as text just gonna put that in here and of course where is this going to well just in this instance I'm gonna kind of put the same email address in here but you can see that this is kind of representing an array we've got I kind of got the two kind of uh, sort of we've got the opening and closing square brackets there but if I just hit the editor what I need to now do is because this is an array we can uh, send this to more than one email address so I'm just gonna do the open and closing uh, kind of square brackets there. I'm going to put a single quote and I'm just going to paste that same email address in there as well. And of course, I could come along here, I could put a little comma, I could put a single quote in here, and I could put another email address in there as well. But I'm only going to do one on this occasion. So just click away. So that's all set. Now I'm into the subject. Well, I'm just going to keep this really simple and I'm just going to put a sort of mobile app form response, something like that, just a straightforward piece of text. Okay, so let's move now on to the HTML. This is where this particular field will allow me to kind of format out, uh, format out a particular string that kind of is a representation of an HTML document, which will be obviously the body message of the email that I receive. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more fiddly because this is now kind of allowing me to kind of key in kind of more sort of free form text. But what is quite strange about this is that we kind of need to put everything in these kind of like these single kind of back ticks the both the start and the end and it's a kind of particular symbol that you kind of got on on your on your, your, your keyboard so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a carriage return here okay I'm going to go up to variables and I'm going to kickstart this whole process by going to request and I'm just going to go, kind of get the body and I'm just going to get the name for example so you can see now that I've started with these kind of back ticks so I've got like an, an opening one and I've got a closing one here now everything that I have in between this will now kind of allow me to do kind of free form text, but it allow me to kind of encapsulate these particular kind of variables that I've got 
in a kind of a dollar and a sort of two sort of an opening and a closing sort of curly brace and this will obviously ultimately translate to these variables then be in the kind of parsed and evaluated and then of course you'll then see the direct result of what that will be and this will be the name obviously so what i can now do is here in between these kind of this this opening and closing back tick is i can now start creating kind of html like this so this is a an opening and closing sort of paragraph and i can do a another one there and i'll just close one off like that um, i'm going to need in fact i'm going to need a couple of these uh, so let's just uh, going to need three of these at the very least so between this one here i'm just going to i'm just going to pad this out i'm going to make this look a little bit more like an html document as an example and then we'll we'll come back and i'll show you what i'll come up with Okay, so there we go. I've included all of it in here. What I've got is got a, a kind of like a paragraph text here, and then I've kind of got like another paragraph text here, which is kind of you know is in bold because using the strong uh, HTML tags there. And I've kind of got my name, my email, and my message. I'm just really sort of just sort of setting up what the the body of that particular email is going to look like. Now that is all I need to do here, and I just can click away on there. And of course, I'm now pretty well much ready to go. So there's one more thing that I need to do here. I just need to return back a kind of a status result um, as part of this particular workflow I need to kind of tell a flood of flow that actually everything's all right it's a status 200 the emails likely to have been being sent I just need to add a return here so I just need to hit the plus hit the return and I'm just going to keep it like that for now for this particular sample but that is pretty well much all of my workflow set up so once I've got that in order to move this then into a production mode I just need to go up here and I just need to hit the ship option now typically you would you would tend to probably test this if I'm honest with you just to make sure that we're kind of getting the results in the email but I'm gonna be pretty confident here and expect this to be working for me once this has been shipped there we go I've kind of got my URL there so I'm gonna copy this endpoint URL I'm gonna go now over to Flutterflow let's quickly get that set up and then we can give it a, a quick test Okay, so here we are then in Flutterflow. I want to keep this as brief as we possibly can because in this particular course, we just want to invoke the API call. So let's quickly set this up in Flutterflow. Let's move over here to then the API calls, click add. Let's create the API call itself. And I'm just going to call this one form to email like that. Now this is going to be a, uh, a post here to match what we have in Build Trip. Now I'm going to paste that kind of form to email uh, kind of URL in here. That's really all I've done is I've taken the endpoint URL from Build Chip. And then we need to now set up some variables now that remember we have kind of like the uh, the email address that we need to pass in. So just choose string, add another variable. This is going to be then the name, just add that in as a string there. And of course this is going to be a message as well. So that's all set up. We need to go over to the body let's go to the body here let's set up a JSON so this is going to be very very similar to kind of um, how we've uh, kind of tested these uh, before so in the double quotes there and just bring the message in as well so we've got those variables that are being passed into this API call and of course this is now then going to send all of this over to build chip so we could just add the call there should all be good there it is all nicely uh, set up for us I just need to go back over into Flutterflow let's quickly set up that API call here so add the action let's type in here the API call here so let's just set that up open up the action flow editor and here I am I can then now say form to email add in the variables here so variable name just do the email first get the value now this is going to be in the widget state because I have a, a text field called email so let's just select that add another one in go to the variable name just choose the name in the value go to widget state choose the name here add the value here let's go to message is the last one here just scroll that down just choose the value oh there we go choose the value you go to widget state and then the message itself now this is going to go here now we'll return it back a result 200 from uh, from build chip so of course that would mean that we'll end up in this particular direction but of course in build chip workflow if we weren't returning back a result 200 it might be a 400 might be a, a 500 there may be some other error or some kind of security constraint then we could end up down in this particular direction but we're only going to focus on the happy day scenario here so all i'm going to do here is just add an action and i'm just going to show um, an information the kind of dialogue here i'm just going to say um i don't know success something like that and just say um message has been sent super simple and then i'm all good so we should now be able to kind of quickly give this a test now just to make sure that we get an email so let's uh, quickly go and test that now okay so here we are in test mode in Flutterflow. i'll just keep some basic details in here let's hit the submit form uh, there we go it's been sent i've just got my eye on my right hand screen here let's see if that email lands in excellent there it is let me just flick over to that particular email 
There it is, brilliant, I've been blinded by the white, but you can see here I've got a very straightforward HTML email. So there we go, that's just build chip out from a basic perspective, we've got a little bit more of a server generated function that's going on there to provide something a little bit more useful to us. So of course we're gonna build on these examples as we move through the actual course itself, but uh, hopefully you found that interesting. And of course, if you would like to learn more about how to set up uh, Resend, which is obviously one of the providers that their build chip integrate with, then there's another video with inside the Academy that'll just kind of give you a bit more information in terms of getting that all set up so you can kind of use resend with inside a build chip workflows so let's now move on to the next part of this particular course